Welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3. A very requested mod, and so now we're back. And we're back with the Peninsula Campaign, Napoleon's Ulcer. We, uh, as per the vote, we're going to play as the Spanish. You can see the um, options or the settings that I've set up right there. And you know what? Let's go straight into it, shall we? Right, and so we have ended up on the campaign map. First mission issued, supporting the cause. Recruit a merchant ship, and so we'll start off with that. Not only that, but we'll take the navy, put that together, and we'll attack the enemy's trade route. And also, one important thing is to know where the enemy is, so my agents will be ordered forward into enemy territory. Now we do have a perfect opportunity here with Joachim uh, Blake? Joyeux? I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Um, Joachim is anyways, he's gonna move to Cordoba and we're gonna attack that. We might actually start that off. But I'm gonna move some troops around beforehand. It's a pretty slam dunk easy victory, but I think that's a good start for the campaign, isn't it? Now over here, I'm a bit more conflicted because either I can move this force down and we could connect the two territories by taking control of all of this. Um, and also, if you look at the different towns, this one is far from anything else the French hold. And if we, after this, go down here, then, you know, this entire region is kind of cut off. Or, like, the, the closest supply points or the closest ways of attack would be uh, from this area and here. Um, it would be these areas and there. Um, there would be uh, attacks. These two are kind of isolated. So in one way you would want to go down this way, but I'm thinking, because well, France is up here, reinforcement's going to be trickling down towards coming through this way and probably coming through from the capital, streaming out there. Obviously the French have been pushing through forces through here. I'm sure Wellington will hold, um, but they've been pushing through there. So, going down here, what I mean is going down here means that I leave this open for where they're probably going to bring the forces down. So as much as I would want to bring this force down and capture this, I think we're going to have to take this force and we're going to set it up as an ambush here. And I'm not sure if there's any forces actually coming down here, but we'll at least be prepared. Uh, what I could do is we could recruit extra troops. I think we need cannon. Cannon's always good. Uh, do we have horse-drawn artillery? This one is horse-drawn. So we need a cannon. We need a cannon for these troops. And we might need, like, at least some cheap um, militiamen. Either just to hold the area in place as I leave. Dude, some of these are really cheap. 130 men for 90 gold. It's not a good unit, but it's a... I can have six of these. Provincial line infantry. They could be used basically just to hold the place. Uh, this unit, really expensive, but it got lots of troops in it. The thing is, at first I actually said it that ultra. Uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get all of these then, because they're so cheap. Um, at first I said it to, to ultra, which you know you had massive units of 450 troops, um, or even larger than that, and really loved it. The problem was that it kind of un it sort of affected the artillery crews to the point where I had, you know, two cannons manned by 240 so on troops, which wasn't necessarily something that I wanted to do. We're going to move this force right here towards Barcelona, and we're going to see if we can make an attack on that. 
And I could make, possibly make an attack here, and I could fight a ferocious battle, which possibly I even could win. But I'm thinking, since they're already angry here, we might wait until they actually revolt, and I may just come in and take control over what's left. So I'm going to set an ambush instead here, um, and maybe then be able to sally forth if reinforcements are coming this way towards the enemy. In terms of diplomacy, I mean, there's only four sh factions on the map. We're at war with one, the other one, the other two are basically permanent ally al <laughs> allies, uh, or at least that's what I'm hoping. Um, in terms of research and technology, we have these. We don't have a lot, but we have this one, which I thought I was going to go for first, but it actually says 5% to guerrilla replenishment rates in all your regions. So I'm guessing that is just for the guerrilla troops, which at the current moment we don't have a lot. So I'm thinking instead anti-French sentiment is more important. We need to keep the provinces on our side, being anti-French. Colonial funding might be a thing, but as of yet we don't actually control any of these trade nodes as of yet. And 10%, that only is going to increase it from 10 to 11. Now there are better trade nodes, like up here, so that would be 22 instead. But currently, I don't see that as a possibility. The other thing that we want to do is the ministers. And I noticed that we got this guy, Aldeberto. And we're going to trade him out for the justice minister. So this guy's got four. The former justice minister had three. The thing, though, is the former justice minister had a bishop as an ancillary. The thing though about the bishop is that it gives one plus to the nobility. And the ruling classes I don't really have to placate because they're already at 16 points. Um, so I don't think the ruling classes are going to go against me at any point. They usually don't. With all of that we've got everything kind of set up and ready for battle. So, let's strike up the drum and march into our first battle. Now, I have um, um, 1,103 soldiers against the enemy's 1,200, almost 1,300. However, I've got cannon and I also have proper troops, which I think I even have guards. Um, which we have. We have uh, the Irish infantry. We also have... Uh, I think this is the King's Guard. Yes, King's Guard. And we've got a lot of other like proper troops and proper cavalry. Well, most of this is provincial troops and citizen uh, militia. So sh we should have pretty easy time at destroying these enemies. So without further ado, let's march to war. Pretty straightforward battle. We've uh, got a ridge here, which we definitely want to take control over. We can see it on the map here. There's a ridge that goes through, and then we also have high ground on this side. You can see my cavalry situated in the woods, ready to swing upon the enemy as I, intend as I imagine they're going to not deploy in the town, they're gonna deploy here somewhere and then march to meet us. We'll take the ridge, we'll fire down upon them, the cavalry will swing in. And that is our plan. Start marching the troops up to the ridge, get the cannons up there. We do have one horse drawn artillery piece. Um, Hill slightly rolls down like that. We'll put it. No, no, oh, god damn it. I was well, had to tell it to run, not to deploy. That's gonna cost us a bit of time. Hopefully, though, it's gonna take a while for the enemy to get into position. Uh, so I'll have time to redeploy it. We were just a little bit of an exercise here. 
Right. Get on with it, quickly. Right. Get the cannon back in order, and so immediately upon that, we'll set them back. Great. Not entirely sure if that is supposed to be infantry marching that we can't see. So we've got the light infantry marching forward in front of the Irish. So the Sharps episode where he trains those guys. Got different hats in that one though. And like a deeper green, but it could be, of course, due to uh, when the episode actually takes place. As these, uh, as this might, as that might be earlier in the campaign, or it could just be the fact that uh, the mod creators are better at. Uh, Getting the historically accurate uniforms than a 90s TV show. Was it in the 90s? I imagine it was. Sharp? I wonder if I get my own sharp. If I can get some uh, small detachment might be lent to us. Doubt it. I don't think the British would... Um, give us anything like that. Right, we've got the enemy slowly marching forward. I'm about to set up the cannons. I mean, if I hadn't made the mistake early on, I'd probably be firing at the enemy already. These hapless armed citizenry marching forward into their doom. Um, I'm going to hold the fire. You know, I should actually replace, so we should have the Irish. No, I don't actually fit them over there because of the uh, cannon. Right, cannon shots bouncing in. We managed to kill a few. See if the second cannon wants to get into place. Slightly turning these troops now. These guys are kind of on the back side of the hill. So it could be that uh, they won't be able to fire. I think the enemy is going to fire on us immediately here. So these guys will be set to fire at will. And you will close in and join in that fight. The enemy is close enough, I think. For us to switch to canister at this point. Go on then, you god awful cannon. Get in right. Get in line. I think we're gonna set the cavalry off already to march them in. And there's no point in not having these guys start firing immediately. Right, these guys are firing. And we're now firing over here. Now you can fire as well. And the cannon should set up. The French coming across the field. They're gonna have to pack this force with a lot more men if they wanna push through here. Because we got the light infantry. And then they're backed up by the Irish. The armed citizenry is falling apart already. It's lucky then that I've already sent my cavalry forwards to join the fight. And this one is about to deliver its canister. And I think this cannon is just about ready to fire. The armed citizen rear has had enough. And I'm ordering the hussars into a charge. The armed citizen rear is done for. Order the infantry to advance. Most of the enemy infantry is actually given up at this point. It's only the provincial corps over there and the enemy cavalry. The enemy might no longer be within range. Switch to round shot. 
Oh, the cavalry is coming. Hold the line. Fire it well. The provincial commander is dead. Continue forwards. Actually, everyone will be ordered forward now because we've won the battle. Secure the field. And cannons will hold fire. There's a risk of friendly fire as we're now advancing all our troops. Allow the hussars to go nuts on our enemy. As this is in within a town, there's no point in actually chasing the enemy. Because we... Everyone will die anyways. Or everyone will be taken out. So I don't need to chase them at all, actually. Wonderful. A uh, great victory here right off the start. A uh, bit unusual. Um, not what I expected, really, from Napoleon... Total War 3, usually long battles, but then again, we were only facing militia and we were able to shock them quite easily with cannon shot and a superior musket fire. Absolutely fantastic result. With only 17 men lost, we took out the entire garrison of almost 1300 troops. So, yeah, we lost 17, they killed 17. That is unheard of for my battles. There's, I always, you know, sometimes I shoot even a, th even a third of all my casualties are sometimes inflicted by myself. Here, we've got exactly 17 killed, exactly 17 lost. Unheard of. Hazards managed to uh, kill the most, no surprise there. Um, none lost as well. It looks as though most of our losses is confined to um, the guards. 13 men fell out of the guards. None of the Irish. I thought the Irish might fall just because they were standing behind the light troops and shots would fly past them into that unit, but no. Wonderful. So it's all down to the guards. And Cordoba has now been secured. As we move in at a breakneck speed, I might as well end turn and we might see if the what the enemy is planning, what their counter moves are before we end this episode. Very interesting. I there was a lot of French troops on the move and I missed an opportunity for a guerrilla fight. So we had this force I bet it's only cavalry that came up from the south. That leaves this without garrison, and I'm sure if we can get that to be more anti-French, that will actually revolt against their control. So the fact that they moved the troops out could cost them dearly. At the same time, we're in control of this, and we are actually within striking distance of this area, so I could take that as well. Um, the um, British actually abandon uh, Lisbon completely and are moving all their forces towards this area. Um, which I'm not sure if that's a great idea. We're going to move the spy forward to this right here. So they are turning in pro French. 5%. They're moving that rather quickly. It could be nice to actually murder that fellow. Which I think I can. Harass army. Assassinate. 57% chance of assassination. That is truly needed. Um, so we could take this army. Strike there. I'm not sure I have to backpedal with this army to get that guy. But uh, that could be also be a thing. Uh, we're going to move closer over here. Okay, don't, they don't have that much here, but because it's a larger town, I imagine a lot of troops will spawn in this area. Quickly turning pro-French at 6.5. I didn't realize it was going to turn this quickly. 
Now they were moving troops around here quite a lot actually. Now none to reinforce the actual town, but had I placed my force right here along this road which we can see go through here, I would have actually taken uh, or like f been able to fight a few troops there. Um, right. We need to move as quickly as possible. I was thinking, oh, we're moving at breakneck speed here, taking this territory and now this one. But given that, I mean, they're turning them over to pro-French at 5.5%. That's super quickly. So if they've got lots of those guys, they can turn a lot of provinces really quickly. So we'll move f as fast as ever. It's basically the same fight, just that they've got a little bit better. They've got the ninth, the ninth regiment. Pretty sure, yeah, that is a really famous regiment, and you can read a little bit about it if you pause the. Uh, but yeah, they're a really good regiment. Anyways, we'll smash them all the same, or maybe, can I demand surrender? Yes! And... Viva la Antonio Banderas! Wonderful. We just took that without a fight and suddenly we have huge swaths of land under our control. Now we do need troops in these areas to um, protect them, to keep hold on them. I do have plenty of cheap troops that I can recruit, that we can send forwards. A lot of these are just, I can just have one of them. I don't need, currently I don't need a lot of proper troops. I just need extra troops to hold the troops, you know, the areas as we move forward. Could be good with a port, I'm sure we get lots of cash out of that. And then also we need a road here. It might have been better to destroy this force, but I'm sure they're whittling the uh, Spanish sun without any uh, reinforcement. Clearly, the French have nothing coming down here, so I can actually continue with this army on all the way up and connect our two regions. But I think that's it, actually. I think that's it for the first episode. So, I'll say as I always say, Hopefully, you guys enjoy this, and hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!